Hello and welcome back to the Old Golden Black for this new series of videos that I'm thinking of doing. It's called What Have We Learnt This Week? It's a new experience now in the Premier League and we're discovering new things. It's changed since the last time we were in the Premier League. So this is just what I've picked up from what's different about the Premier League or what I've seen from the Wolves team going forward. Uh, so if you're interested in seeing more of them, then subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on those. And also like the video and everything else, share it to everybody. A couple of other things as well. If you just check out the links in the description down below, I'm running the Banks' 10K in a couple of weeks for Cure Leukemia. So if you've got any spare change that you could donate, that would be very much appreciated. And also there are links down below for blood donation and the bone marrow register, which if you're interested, I'll put a little link to a video uh, that I've done in the past about that there. So the first thing that we've learnt this week is that Wolves can compete in the Premier League. I think last time it was very much backs against the wall trying to get points any way we could but this time we seem much faster to the ball, we seem stronger in possession and we seem like we can create more chances on a consistent basis. It wouldn't surprise me that on Saturday even against Manchester City that we will get opportunities to score but what we're lacking at the moment is just to take those opportunities, which will come, I think, against probably some of the lesser teams in the league in the next couple of weeks. But hopefully they'll start coming, we'll start scoring goals on a more consistent basis. We've controlled long periods of both of the games that we've played. We've been had the opposition down to 10 men as well, but just failed to take those opportunities to get points on the board. The second thing is João Moutinho is an absolute passing machine. I really, really like him as a player. He's understated, I think. He's constantly working hard. You only have to look at the pictures of the of the goals that we've conceded to see that it, how close he is to the, the opposition player all the time, working so hard. And it seemed as if on Saturday that every 30 seconds or so he was receiving the ball and using it. Different play to Neves, I think, in that respect. Um, so. There are there are similarities between the two of them, but I think he's more of a like he's the beating heart of the team, and people suggest in taking him out to bring in Sace or Dendonka to provide a little bit more security for the back three, will lack that ticking over, and I think we'll create fewer chances without Moutinho in the team. Point number three for this week is that Nuno needs a plan B. Now we saw this a number of times last season uh, when Wolves were behind in games or chasing games or trying to get a goal in a game. And when they changed formation from that 3-4-3, they were unable to break through or to create any chances. And that was evident again on Saturday. He was bold making the changes, bringing on Bonatini and Traore at half-time and then Gibbs-White later in the game. Perhaps when Cavaliero is back fit as well, it will have more options on the bench. But we changed to have either Jimenez was out wide or they were playing two up front and Bonatini was the main man. And it, it didn't really work and that's something that I thought would have been worked on over pre-season. He stubbornly stuck to this 3-4-3, whereas if you watch a team like Manchester City, they will flip between three or four formations in the same game and confuse the opposition and that's something that I think needs to be worked on as we go forward because we will struggle in games more this season than last season and we need to have a way of getting back into the game and it doesn't work at the moment the way that Nuno changes it. Point number four is that Tim Spears loves Matt Doherty and Connor Cody. There was a lot of vitriol on Twitter after the game towards Matt Doherty and Connor Cody, which I think some some of it was really undeserved. And people unfollowing Doherty on Twitter, I mean, what's that going to do for anybody? Yet Tim Spears was very, very adamant that Doherty and Cody were good players at the Premier League level and that, you know, we mustn't forget that Doherty was third in the player of the season awards ahead of Cavaliero and Jota etc but this is the here and now and we've seen how cutthroat Fosun are and if and Nuno is if Doherty is not performing to in a way that Nuno is happy with he'll be replaced and and Spears yesterday in the live stream defended Cody saying that it wasn't his fault for the second goal well I'm sorry but the captain and the centre back of the team turning his back on a shot like that is not what I want to see from my captain. I think Cody will be disappointed in himself as well, but the blind defence of those type of players from the Express and Star and from Tim Spears in particular is something that I think fans have come accustomed to now. He's been quite critical of Patricio and his control of the area where I don't think he can be blamed for any of the goals that he's conceded. And the final thing that I've learned is that clapping England players because they played well at the World Cup just makes you look foolish. There were two occasions on Saturday where opposition players were being applauded because of their involvement for England at the World Cup, only for the Wolves fans who were clapping them to 
quickly changed their mind as to how they felt about that player, and it just it just looks stupid. Jamie Vardy, of course, got applauded when his name was read out on the team sheet, and then a, a couple of times by a handful of people when the ball was being knocked about. But then he goes and clatters Matt Doherty, nearly broke, breaking his leg, and then everybody suddenly changes and sh- shouting abuse at him. Similar with Harry Maguire being clapped regularly during the game and then when he comes to waste time down in the corner in the last couple of minutes there's vitriol <laughs> from the same people. I'm aware that England fans are very happy with the way that they performed at the World Cup which is fine, I've got no problems with that at all but now they're Leicester players or they're Man City players. We're going to see John Stones and Kyle Walker at the weekend, are we going to be clapping them if and then one of them score or one of them breaks Jota's leg or something? I think it's, it's over now the World Cup. If you want to clap them, go to an England game. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.